Hello everyone and welcome to CADCAM C tutorials. This is the second part in the series of numerical simulation of 2D steady state heat conduction. In the previous video, we have talked about the procedure of the simulation. So the first step was the formulation of governing differential equation. And in the first part, we have discussed about the formulation. You can watch this video by clicking on this i button. The second step is the discretization of domain into subdomain. So basically we are trying to divide our entire domain into subdomain and that we are going to discuss in this video. After discretizing the domain, the third step is converting differential governing equation into algebraic equation and for that we will be using the Taylor series expansion. Once we will convert the differential equation into algebraic equation, we can simply use that equation to find out the temperature distribution within the domain. So we are going to obtain the solution of those algebraic equation and for that we will use the MATLAB. Once we get the solution that is the temperature distribution within the domain, we can plot those results using the control plots and we will also do that using the MATLAB. So let us first talk about the discretization of domain into subdomain. So in the previous video we have seen that our domain is 2D domain that is a simple rectangle or square. In order to divide the entire domain into subdomain that is to divide the domain into small parts. What we are going to do is we are dividing the domain vertically and horizontally by drawing the vertical and horizontal lines. So if we draw vertical lines and horizontal lines you can see that the entire domain is divided into small squares and each small square is called as a subdomain of the entire big domain. So once we will divide the entire domain into subdomain, you can find different elements, different small elements. Here in our case, all the small elements are of the same size. So once you divide the entire domain into subdomain by plotting the vertical and horizontal lines, you may find here that all the lines intersects each and every line. So the intersection points are called as the grid points that you can see over here by yellow dots. And so here in order to solve the numerical simulation here we are using the finite difference method and in finite difference method the algebraic equation that we are going to form will be applied to each and every grid point that you can see over here. So grid points are nothing but when you divide the entire domain into subdomain and when you plot the vertical and horizontal lines then each line intersects with other lines so each horizontal line will intersect with vertical lines and those intersection points are called as grid points and those grid points are the point of our interest where the algebraic equation will be solved and we can find the value of temperature at those grid points so once we will solve the algebraic equation at each and every grid point then we can find the temperature distribution within the domain. So here when we are going to make the program and uh, when we are going to find the solution of algebraic equation at each and every grid point, it is necessary to have the identity of each and every grid point. So in order to get the identity of each and every grid point, what we are going to use it, we are going to use the coordinate system and we are going to use the indices. So here in our case, we are here, the horizontal axis is called as x axis and we are going to use the index i for the horizontal direction. So here this grid point is having the index i of value 1 and as we will proceed the value of index increases for each and every grid point and ultimately for this end grid point in the x direction we will be having the index nx. So basically we can call it like in x direction we have nx grid points. In the similar fashion we have to apply the index for the vertical direction also and for that we will use the index j for the vertical direction. And in the similar fashion this grid point is called as index 1 in vertical direction and as we move in vertical direction the index value increases and it will reach up to value of ny. So for this particular domain we can say like 
This domain is having the grid points nx and y where nx are the grid points in x direction and ny are the number of grid points in y direction. So once we have discretized the domain, we can classify the grid points into different categories. So if we consider here that these are the grid lines, so we have drawn the vertical and horizontal lines to divide the entire domain. Now if we classify the grid points then these grid points are on the left wall and these are called the wall grid points and the boundary conditions are applied to these grid points because when we are going to create the code or the program for the simulation then we know the temperature at this wall so we can assign the temperature value directly to these grid points so these grid points are called as the boundary grid points for the left wall in the similar fashion these grid points are the boundary grid point for the top wall similarly these grid points are the grid points that are the boundary grid point for the bottom wall and these are for the right walls now apart from these boundary grid points there are corner grid points that are shown by these yellow dots and you can observe that these grid points are shared by two walls so these grid points are shared by two boundaries so these grid points physically will take the effect of both the boundary conditions of both the adjacent walls apart from these all these boundary grid points we are having the grid points that are inside of these boundary grid points and are called as the interior grid points so this is how we can classify all the grid points based on the location of the grid points inside the domain now once we get the idea about the classification of these grid points now let us have some terminologies of the domain for the geometry so here if we consider this x direction then the successive distance between the two successive grid points is denoted by dx here and that is nothing but the size of the element that we have discretized our domain from so here dx is the length of element in the x direction in the similar fashion dy is the length of element in the y direction so that is nothing but the distance between the two successive grid points in respective directions now if we consider that entire width of the domain as w and entire height of the domain as h now in the previous slide we have shown that in x direction we have nx number of grid points and in the y direction we have ny number of grid points so from these parameters we can find the value of dx and dy that we will be using for the simulation so we can simply write that dx is nothing but width of the domain divided by number of grid point in x direction minus 1 in the similar fashion we can write dy as h divided by ny minus 1 so this is all about how we can discretize the domain how we can create the grid points how we can assign the value of dx and dy for the different configuration so if you change the number of division in x and y direction you can find the different value of dx and dy for particular value of width and height so after dividing the entire domain into subdomain and after creating the grid points now we have to know that what are the formulas to be applied at all the grid points and for that we are converting the differential governing equation into the algebraic equation so in order to convert the governing differential equation into the algebraic equations we are using the Taylor series expansion so let us first understand the Taylor series expansion so the Taylor series expansion tells us that if we want to estimate the value of a function at a certain distance dx from the point of interest x then we can write the Taylor series expansion in a simply form as value of function at a point x plus dx can be found from the value of the function at a point x and its derivatives so we can write it as f of x plus dx equals to f of x plus f dash of x into dx by one factorial plus 
f double dash of x into dx square by 2 factorial plus f triple dash x into dx cube by 3 factorial so on. So here for simplicity if we neglect the higher order term because the value of dx is very small so as we increase the power of dx the value will be small so if we neglect the higher order term then by retaining the first two derivative we can write it as f of x plus dx equals to f of x plus f dash of x into dx by 1 factorial plus f double dash of x into dx square by 2 factorial. So this is called as the Taylor series expansion in forward direction because we are moving ahead of x by adding dx. In the similar fashion we can write the Taylor series expansion in the backward direction also where we are trying to deduct the distance from the x. So for that we can write it as f of x minus dx as f of x minus f dash of x into dx by 1 factorial plus f double dash of x into dx square by 2 factorial minus f triple dash x into dx cube by 3 factorial and so on. In the similar fashion if we neglect the higher order terms then we can write f of x minus dx equals to f of x minus f dash of x into dx by 1 factorial plus f double dash of x into dx square by 2 factorial. Now here if we look at the two equations that are shown by equation 1 and equation 2 and if we combine both the equations then if we sum the left hand side of both the equation then it will be f of x plus dx plus f of x minus dx equals to f of x plus f of x plus f dash of x into dx by 1 factorial minus f dash of x into dx by 1 factorial so both this term will cancel out and the remaining will be plus f double dash of x into dx square by 2 factorial plus f double dash of x into dx square by 2 factorial so here the 2 factorial is nothing but 2 so when we will combine both this term then it will be f double dash of x into dx square so ultimately you will get the equation as f of x plus dx plus f of x minus dx equals to 2 times of f of x plus f double dash of x into dx square. Now here we are interested to find out the double derivative of the function f of x. So we can write it as f double dash of x as f of x plus dx plus f of x minus dx minus 2 times f of x divided by dx square. Now let us try to correlate this double derivative of function f of x with our governing differential equation. So from the governing differential equation we have the double derivative of temperature with respect to x and with respect to y. So if we compare d square t by dx square with double derivative of x that is nothing but d square f of x by dx square then f of x will be t that is the temperature in our case. So we can simply write d square t by dx square as a t x plus dx y because here in our case the temperature is dependent on the two spatial variables that is x and y because temperature varies in x as well as in y but in Taylor series expansion we have considered only the one variable that is in x direction so when we are getting this d square t by dx square from the f double dash of x we don't consider any change in y so y will be as it is and there will be only change in x as per the Taylor series expansion so d square t by dx square will be t of f of x plus dx and y will be as it is plus t x minus dx and y minus 2 times t of x and y as it is divided by dx square. When we apply the Taylor series expansion in the y direction and we perform the same procedure then we can also find the d square t by dy square as a t. Now here in this case there will be no change in x direction so x will be as it is in all the terms and there will be changes in y. So d square t by dy square equals to t x y plus dy plus t x of y minus dy minus 2 times of t xy divided by dy square. Now as we know that our differential equation is d square t by dx square plus d square t by dy square equals to 0. 
and when we'll insert the values of this d square d by dx square and d square d by dy square then we can get the expression like this and uh, when we'll take this t of xy on the left hand side and remaining things on the right hand side of the equation then we can write something like t of xy equals to t of x plus dxy plus t of x minus dxy divided by dx square plus t of xy plus dy plus t of xy minus dy divided by dy square all divided by 2 divided by dx square plus 2 divided by dy square so for the simplicity if we assume that we are dividing our domain in such a way that the element size in x direction and y direction are same that is the dx equals to dy so when we will insert here dx equals to dy then we can find the simplest form of the temperature distribution for 2d steady state heat conduction as t of xy equals to t of x plus dxy plus t of x minus dxy plus t of x y plus dy plus t of x y minus dy the entire term divided by 4. Now if we want to incorporate the indexes that we have discussed earlier so from here you can see that we have taken the indexes i for the x direction and index j for the y direction. So x plus dx is nothing but the grid point that is after the grid point x in x direction. So ultimately the grid point x plus dx will be the next grid point that is at x in x direction. So x plus dx can be replaced by i plus 1 that is the adjacent grid point in x direction. Similarly the x minus dx is the previous grid point in x direction and that can be represented as i minus 1. In the similar fashion y plus dy is the grid point that is above the point above the grid point of the point of interest that is the j plus 1. In the similar fashion y minus dy is the grid point that is below the grid point of interest. So when we write the same equation in terms of the indexes then it can be represented as t of ij equals to t of i plus 1j plus t of i minus 1j plus t of i j plus 1 plus t of i j minus 1 the entire divided by 4. So if you observe this equation then we can simply tell that the equation is nothing but the average of all the surrounding temperature grid point. So in steady state condition when you want to find out the temperature of any grid point then it is nothing but the average of the temperatures of the surrounding grid points. So this is all about the discretization of domain and how to convert the governing differential equation into the algebraic equation and finally how to use the indexes so that we can simply implement it using the MATLAB. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video then please hit on the like button, share this video and subscribe to this channel CADCAMC Tutorials. Thanks.